Hi everyone, my name is Günter Warner and in this short talk I would like to discuss the use of Hexpin maps as a tool for games user research. As many games are inherently spatial, heat maps have become a popular and a quick way to observe the variation of a variable such as player deaths across an environment. Uh, continuous heat maps, like they are commonly used are in games user research, can make it however difficult to compare values between regions. Consider, for instance, the heat map on this slide, where it's pretty difficult to say if more deaths have happened in the more concise but more dense area A, or rather in the larger but less dense area B. Uh, moreover, heat maps are also usually restricted to a single or at most uh, two variables, which also makes it difficult to compare uh, different metrics within a single image. To compare multiple variables against each other and across a map, so-called hexpin maps can be very valuable. Uh, hexpin maps combine hexagonal pinning with some sort of visual cliff. The regular grid which is produced by the pinning facilitates uh, comparisons across areas and also makes it possible to compare data which has been captured at different points in time because uh, the subdivision is basically not affected by the actual distribution of the data. Uh, a glyph is then placed within each uh, cell, within each hexagon, to encode uh, the different variables. Here, uh, a so-called Wurman dot is used, which basically consists of two uh, circles. The outer circle indicates the uh, spatial area to which the data belongs to, and the inner circle uh, shows the actual data within uh, this area. Uh, these glyphs have the advantage that they are visually very simple and are also therefore easy to read when they become smaller. So here are a few examples of actual hex bin maps produced with data from StarCraft II. Uh, in its simplest form, it encodes one variable. So in that case, the number of destroyed units uh, within a cell, encoded by the size and the color of the inner circle. Uh, this map, in contrast, already shows two variables. The color of the outer circle shows the number of total destroyed units, while the inner circle uses a bipolar color scheme to indicate which of the two teams has lost more units. And this one, on the other hand, now already shows four different variables. Uh, two are encoded in the inner circle through its size and its color. One is encoded in the color of the outer circle, and the small arrows indicate from which sides the units have been attacked. We also assess the usefulness and efficiency of hex bin maps for analyzing game-related data uh, through an online study with around 200 participants and uh, almost 30 tasks. I can't go into too much detail here, but the uh, general takeaways of the user study were that uh, participants generally appreciate the, the display of multiple variables uh, within a single map and that the visualizations remained clean and structured uh, even when displaying three and four variables. Uh, correctness achieved with the maps in terms of our estimating and uh, comparing values was also generally good but sometimes also reduced by the actual visual encoding. As such, the visual encoding itself needs to be chosen with care as it can impact performance when working with these kind of maps. Uh, one also has to keep in mind that only a certain number of variables can be shown within an area of certain size. Also because the color-coded areas need to have sufficient size to ensure that the colors can be perceived accurately. That's it uh, from my side. I hope this talk gave you at least a, a short impression of the value of hex bin maps for analyzing uh, spatial data. Uh, if you would like to know more about the results of the user study, I invite you to take a look at the paper. Uh, you can find the reference and the link to the paper here uh, on this slide. Uh, thanks for watching. All this is possible thanks to our sponsors, Playtest Cloud, Player Research, 
balsamic adobe the book how to be a games user researcher ux is fine antidote and sketch